Hello and welcome to Newspeak. I'm Peter Whittle. I'm joined, please to say, as usual, by Rafe Hadelman Koo, Rolf historian and, of course, our senior fellow, and Amy Gallagher from Stand Up to Woke and, of course, uh, of the New Culture Forum, and Dr. Philip Kisley, senior fellow and cultural historian. Uh, before we talk about really important uh, issues of this week, just a note to you, if, that is, if you haven't seen it already, uh, we have our Smith Lecture coming up, our annual Smith Lecture. Uh, as you know, we've had great names in the past. We've had Nigel Farage, Douglas Murray, David Starkey. I'm very pleased to say uh, this year we have Ian Hershey Ali, who is famous writer, politician, former politician, and campaigner. She will be giving the lecture, and the title of the lecture is Sleepwalking into Disaster. Mm. Uh, so I think it's going to be a fascinating evening. If you'd like to come, best thing to do at this stage is to go to our website, newcultureforum.org.uk, and then you will be directed. You can see there's a link where you can go to to uh, get tickets. But that's 26th of November, in London, and of course it's an evening event, so it'll be at seven o'clock. Mm. Okay, look forward to hopefully seeing you there. Um, it seems to me that there's one issue this week which really basically, you know, dominates, for me at least, the news. It's not the budget, actually. Mm. Um, it's what happened, or should I say, the, the new information we got mm. about Southport, Philip. Mm. Yeah, it's been... <clears throat> It's been a hell of a week, and um, as we find out that the uh, person who's been charged uh, for the atrocity in Southport had manuals from Al-Qaeda, which contravenes the Terrorism Act from 2000, I think, but also uh, ricin, which is a biological weapon, um, it feels as though we are looking at a new era of terror, of intimidation, and mass murder, potentially. Okay, so I think something's happened this week. We live in a different country now. I was thinking um, very much as I heard this about what we were talking about last week, uh, Peter Lynch. And I was thinking about all of those people who are in prison for, you know, uh, intemperate words and, and tweets and shouting in the street and God knows what, but they are in prison because they thought exactly that this stuff was happening. Mm. The government knew precisely what happened and yet those people still went to prison. Mm. So when I, I don't know about everybody else, but when I heard about this on Tuesday, I was just struck dumb. Um, I really didn't know what to think. And one of the first things that, 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 that really did uh, bring the, the, the scariness home to me is the fact that this kid is just 17, okay? This is a terrorist who is interested in mass destruction, um, alleged terrorist, he's, you know, he hasn't been charged yet, but, um, and he's 17 years old. This is not a Welshman. Mm. No, we, we have to look that's because we are law-abiding people we have to basically go along with the fact that we're not meant to talk too closely uh, about the details we don't prejudice the trial and all of this although as has been pointed out you know it didn't seem to worry them when they were locking mm. these people up mm. you know mm. and they put out a notice saying these criminals will be dealt with you know yeah. I mean I, my reaction to this was one of just sheer anger, actually, actually, and, and hate, hate towards the government, actually. Mm. But again, you see, I'm having to say this, but these things have not been completely established. Mm. It's just that it beggars common sense and belief to think that that isn't the case. Mm. Yeah, well, we, first we were told he was a Cardiff-born Welshman. Um, and yeah. It took time for it to come out that he was a second-generation immigrant and he was a Rwandan. Um, even that was kind of, you know, we were suddenly told something else. And now we're seeing that actually he was looking mm -hmm. at Al-Qaeda terror manual. We were told by Yvette Cooper that um, this had nothing to do with Islam. And uh, if we were to say it had, it 
it would be a form of Islamophobia. We were also told by the government that um, this was not terror related and it was, there was no evidence that it was. Mm-hmm. Now we found out this new evidence has come through about him having rice in, which, as I understand it, is very difficult to obtain on your own. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, we have obviously there's lots of questions that we have aren't answered yet. How did he get hold of this, and how, why was he looking at this terror, terrorist manual? Um, but there's, you know, there's there's evidence coming through that this was, you know, that we were misled essentially that the, mm-hmm. that the the government and the police would have known these these facts mm-hmm. very early on when they were accusing people of being far right thugs, mm-hmm. when we saw people, um, you know. Uh, attacking mosques which was of course deplorable but you know people were saying oh it's their prejudice they're just assuming it's is is it's to do with islam but actually maybe people in that community knew things i know that there were lots of rumors mm-hmm. as i understand it about this man mm-hmm. and maybe you know there were things that people knew that we didn't know about as to why they were so angry at that particular um you know culture yeah um, yeah, and I mean, now we're, we're just left in this position where obviously we're waiting for the trial. And it should be said, he's this, the trial of this man, Axel Rubicana, won't be till January of next year. So his trial has not been fast-tracked. And as I understand it, his hearing was delayed till after the Saturday protests, uh, which um, of the, the anti-immigration protests or, or patriot, patriotic protests. The Tommy Robinson. The Tommy mm-hmm. Robinson. Uh, and um, obviously it was released the day before the budget mm-hmm. so as to squash it as, as as much as it possibly can and we know yeah we were, were people that were even just speaking out about this online were treated like they were absolutely you know um yeah, well far-right thugs that's what they were called and they were put in prison asap and yet that hasn't been the treatment of a man who's actually murdered children mm-hmm that he seems to be being protected or that the case is, is, is not being treated in the same way. And you can see why people are angry, you know, mm. given what we were made to feel, that we were so prejudiced, that I think most of us felt that this crime, um, it, it didn't resemble British cult, British values or British culture. There was something about it. The fact that a Taylor Swift dance class was attacked, and mm. we know that there was a failed terrorist or planned terrorist attack on a Taylor Swift concert in Vienna, um, lucky that was thwarted, but there was something about attacking young girls and women, you know, yeah. attending something that was of, you know, I guess we could say Western values mm. uh, and, and the extreme, you know, how extreme the crime was that we all felt, no, there's something up here. This doesn't happen usually. This, you know, we, we, the only time we see it is when it is related to Islamic terrorism. Mm. And that's what, you know, that was our instinct. And we were made to feel like we were terrible people for having that kind of an instinct. And it's been proven to be correct and and that's why i think so many people are so angry i think the thing is here is that yes our instinct you know we've been we've proven to be right mm. um but you see Rafe, uh, i suppose <clears throat> the difference here and, and, the, and the crucial thing is and in fact i would say the overriding issue um, is the scale of the possible cover-up mm. that's right this stinks to high heaven mm. And, you know, the facts will come out. I mean, there are efforts to su- try to suppress what the government really knew right now. We've had Lindsay Hoyle mm-hmm. turn, based, essentially say that you're not allowed to discuss this in the Houses of mm-hmm. Parliament because this, this case is ongoing. Funnily enough, that didn't seem to be an issue when you had Yvette Cooper and others talking about far-right thuggery mm-hmm. and criminals mm-hmm. uh, before the trials had happened and the convictions had happened for uh, the protesters. It, 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 just as we've now had again, of course, uh, the, the, the police saying don't speak about this and yet they were happy as you said to refer to criminals mm. the question here of course is when did our prime minister know first know about this because it's it's obvious that once the, the a terrorist is seized their house is immediately searched and uh, clearly they would have found this rice in all this all the al-qaeda work uh, very early on mm. so at what point did the government know about this at what point did they know he was going to be charged under the bio weapons terrorism uh, bio warfare act and under the terrorism act and if it is shown that actually they knew about this at the same time that they were targeting individuals mm. for, for speaking about things that they knew were true but mm. said were false this could potentially be bring down a government in, 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 in old days. It will be grounds for resignation. Mm. Unfortunately, these days, nobody seems to resign, no matter how big the scandal. But it is on those levels. And it puts into, you know, it puts into the shade 
any scandal we've had, mm. uh, in, including Partygate mm. and everything else like that, because people have gone to jail over this. Mm. There is now legitimate reason, as the Free Speech Union have also well, said. People, someone's died for, 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 well. yeah, died in Somebody jail. died to cause no violence whatsoever. Mm. But there, is, there are potentially uh, grounds here for appeals if not against the convictions, against the harsh sentences that were meted out to people who were motivated, let's remember, not out of hatred, but out of despair for what happened to these poor three, the three girls. Uh, look, there, you know, and look, but you know, to, to be balanced, we have to have balance on this channel. Yes, it is true. We do not know officially the motive for this individual. But, you know, possession of an Al-Qaeda terrorist yes. manual yeah. <laughs> should suggest some ideological leanings there because there are only two types of people who would be in possession of that. One, jihadists, and two, people like Douglas Murray, an anti-extremist, you need to know what these chaps are up to. Hmm. I rather suspect he doesn't fall into the Douglas hmm. Murray camp. Um, but, you know, we'll see what the evidence says along those lines. But that is fundamentally important because it strikes right at the heart of public trust in, in, the, mm -hmm. in our political class. We know how low public trust is at the current time, and it seems as if our, our elites are doing everything they can to erode that trust even further. Yeah. I think there's something else happening as well. It's the most predictable thing that, that you could imagine. It's just that people are trying to damp it down. And if anybody is uh, reacting against this, like the Lib uh, leader of the Lib Dems was saying, oh, people are airing their prejudices. They're not airing their prejudices. They're angry and they're frightened. It's this narrative that happens. We're going to get poetry. We're going to get people saying, don't look back in anger, you know, and then it's going to be memory hold. That's the thing. We mustn't allow people to forget this. And that seems absurd, my saying that today, because, you know, everybody's talking about it and everybody's been talking about it for the last couple of days. But how many events and instances can we think of where things are happening so quickly and our, our mm. society is so violent and so torn apart at the moment it's just the next thing will happen and the next thing will happen we must not forget this and we must keep it front and center of what we're thinking and 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 we must we must lobby we must be out in the streets in a sensible way we really must fight back and use this as a catalyst for change. Yes, uh, I, well, uh, absolutely. When you say uh, catalyst for change, uh, I know we've said this before, I don't quite know what else it would take for people to wake up. Hmm. If what happens to, you know, if what happened turns out, as we think it must do, to be true. Hmm. And let's face it, look, let's talk about, he was arrested, this guy. Sorry if this prejudice is the case or whatever. You do those sweeps of those houses on that day mm. or the day after. Are we really meant to believe? Forget Keir Starmer for a while. Mm. What about the police? Mm. What about Merseyside police? Mm. What about these special services? Mm. All of these things. Mm. Mm. I think every one of them, it seems, you know, to me, is implicated in this. Mm. Um, and, of course, not least the media. If I see one more picture yeah. oh. of a nice, cheery little school kid, I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, this, this you know, is... What is the matter with these people? You know, there are like, what, is it sort of, what, 10 years at least of photographs? Are we, mm. What about these mug shots? Yeah, this Why is... is he always like this? Why? Has he got a beard or something? Mm. What? Mm. Mm. You know? This is, this is a classic manipulation. It's using particular signs and signifiers. And what they're doing is subconsciously they're pushing innocence. Yeah. You know, they're pushing this, not necessarily of this particular person, but this kind of person must be associated with innocence. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's, a, it's a messaging that is relentless. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say we've got to be activists about this. We've got to take... Uh, a leaf from the other side book you know we've got to be serious about it because it's intellectual but it's also emotional and we've got to put those things together to be to 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 make practical change this is you know if we can get anything from good from this terrible tragedy it's that we have to mobilize ourselves because if we don't it really is the end for us because if they let this just go by okay and and they just frame it as a tragedy it's nothing more it's just a tragedy you shouldn't be thinking about context you shouldn't be thinking about motivation if they allow that to happen then anything can happen and bearing in mind this is biological warfare we're mm. talking about now and we need to keep in mind the victims as well it's the same mm. with peter lynch but 
when they when they show this photo of him alongside the girls that were murdered, it's almost as though he's slightly older than them or a similar age to them. Mm. And actually, you need to think about what they experienced. They had a big, tall, terrifying man actually stabbed them to death. That's the last thing they saw as, mm. as they died. They didn't see that little boy. They mm. saw a man. And that's what we need to keep in mind. And we, we're seeing pictures, well, we're seeing drawings of him in court, as you say, covering his face up which is, you know, I mean, you can interpret that in all sorts of ways, but to me that smacks of just cowardice and shame that he mm. can't even face what he's done. Um, he's sorry, I mean, why yes. do they even allow him to cover his face? I well, it's a good point, mm. yeah. It's a very good point. But why yes. haven't we seen the mugshot? Yes. We saw yes. Lucy yes. Ledby's yes. mugshot. You know, there's, mm. there's obviously a clear thing here. Peter Lynch's mugshot. You look, you look yes. in the newspapers, yeah. constantly referred to as British and Christian, mm. Uh, all the commentators have been saying the same thing. Even Guido Fawkes, when Guido Fawkes tried to publish an article, this is amazing, right? Guido Fawkes is a very popular website read, watched by all the politicos, which breaks exclusive news stories and scandals. It was raising questions about why it had taken so long for any uh, procedures to, to be launched against this chap. And there was pressure put on Guido Fawkes, an independent mm. journalism source from above, to pull that mm. story. Mm. There's clearly every effort being made here to ensure that the public are kept in the dark mm. and to suppress this. Firstly, because, of course, the scandal is so huge about what they've done. And secondly, I suppose they don't want people to quite rightly get so anger angered that it might kick off again. Mm. Have you noticed, by the way, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're recording this a bit earlier. This is going, this is Saturday. This is going out Saturday. This is Saturday. Uh, so we're actually doing a public service by even talking about this still now. Mm. But, I mean, I was looking at the papers in the day after the budget and by that i mean the digital online versions mm. which mm. have usually got more space there's nothing about yeah it's it. gone mm. it's gone out of the news it's cycle. gone yeah no, oh, incredible well, yeah it's not just me that i just thought no it's, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. it's moving on to something i mean else. to me it feels you know like an absolute mm. as you said like something that um you know that the, it's kind of totally shifts our whole perspective on everything mm. that we've really you know what we've realized about the government what this mm. says about our culture where we are mm. and yet it's it's it was kind of uh, you know gone been and gone out of the news cycle as in, within the space of 24 hours mm. um and it's almost like the budget you know i mean of course that that was the plan wasn't it that they would mm. release it before the budget and then we'd get all the headlines about the budget and people would forget about it because it's not going to be forgotten about because we are going to have more hope well we will at some point have more information coming through about about what happened There'll and of more, course yeah. yeah of course there will be a yeah. trial so um, i mean i assume they're going to try to suppress it as much as they can but they mm. they can't totally suppress it but i guess maybe they think if they drip drip feed us kind of bits of information then it won't seem as catastrophic than mm. that's giving us the whole story in one go maybe that's the, that's maybe that's the thinking behind it but um yeah it's it's you know it, it's something that is um to me it's just it, it just it sums up where where we're at really the reality of this government and and you know the, mm. the failure of Im integration and immigration and, and everything really i think actually uh, those events that really hit you in the solar plexus there mm. I, and I remember when the, when I, I when this came through this news which was actually also late in the day mm. wasn't mm. it on tuesday, tuesday night it it sort of it was a visceral feeling right yeah yeah of, you know, you know You've, you know, this was the, this was actually a, a, a perfect example of what we are up against yeah. and basically the scale of it. And I thought, finally, we've got them. Yeah, mm. well, we've got them. Because, it's, because, sorry, because, because let's be clear here. It was the fact that they were able to say this is misinformation that mm. started this. Right, this chap wasn't an asylum seeker. Yeah. He wasn't a Muslim. It's, it's, it's very that clear. That enabled them to yeah. completely ignore mm. the the true causes of the protests mm. in a way that you didn't see when you had similar things happening in Europe. Mm. They've been mm. forced to face up to the reality, mm. and it has been it has been so easy then to completely sidestep the genuine concerns held by the majority of the population of this country and blame it all on misinformation and undermine all of those who truly are uh, concerned about all this. And that's one of the reasons it's carrying on. I think uh, you were talking about, you know, not letting it go. Well, we certainly won't let it go, no. uh, uh, that's for sure. Um, but uh, politically, I've been, again, I have to put this in, because, of course, today, Saturday, right, is the day we're going to find out who the Tory leader is. But mm. just actually almost a, apart from that, Jenrick, I think, has been good yeah. uh, again. Mm. And, you know, um, he's electioneering and everything.
But he did say, so he says he seemed to have gripped certain things when he said, you know, people have been gaslit mm. by the liberal elite. That shows an, a, a depth of thinking about it that is not just simply... I, I think so, and I, th I think that's a really key point. It's human nature, isn't it? People do, on, on a personal level or a national level, people do not like being manipulated. Mm. And we are being manipulated on a scale that is staggering, mm. okay? Mm. We're being lied to. Uh, and we've been treated like idiots. The mm. British public is being treated like idiots. So there's repulsion at the abomination of the act, but it's compounded by this treatment. Mm. Now, they know that. It's almost as though they want to start a, a, a civil war. Mm. You know, it's so cack-handedly done. It's like everything else they've done since they've been in power. It's just so stupidly handled, and everybody is frustrated. Everybody is angry, and it's that manipulation which is driving this feeling and it's very dangerous yes, yes. and it's just it's just the, the rotherham rape gangs mm. all over again mm. not wanting yeah. to confront the reality for the reasons of political correctness hiding the reality and i think that they're not only petrified by political correctness i think they generally are scared because they know the full scale of the problem they're privy to the mi5 mm. and gchq briefings about the levels of terrorist uh, threats in this country and we know 75 or more percent, and according to the MI5, are Islamic extremist threats. Mm. They know how many people just like this have been stopped by our security services who haven't been able to get this far. And I think they're just so daunted by the scale, the mountain mm. of, the, of facing them, that they just won't do everything to put their heads in the sand. Well, they're daunted by it, and also they're to blame. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. And, and if they well, if they hold their hands up for this, then they've got to say, oh well, there's this other thing called yeah. mass immigration, mm -hmm. this project that we've inflicted on you for the last God knows how many decades. Oh, maybe it's not been that good for us. They have to say that, and they will never say that. I suppose the generic, you know, game was again he alluded to to immigration, mm -hmm. which I mean, it just shows you how far we've come or yeah. fallen in how tightly we have to talk about this stuff that actually just. Well, obviously, is the case is something to do with immigration, mm -hmm. isn't it? I yeah. mean, whatever. Uh, that is now considered to be really quite a daring thing to say. And mm. um, I, 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 I think we have got to make sure people don't forget. Mm. Um, I, well, I don't mean to be condescending that people won't forget, mm. but uh, we've got to we've got to represent it. I think because it is quite marked, mm -hmm. as you say, mm. how you're not already hearing about this. Um, anyway. It, the date is January for his, his trial. Um, I mentioned Jenrick there. It depends when you're watching this during the day, uh, so we might seem like fools. Um, but of course, it's the Tory leadership. Mm. It's, it's, um, bear with us, won't you? Looks like it's Kemi, yeah. probably, mm. doesn't it? Mm. Looks like it's yeah, she's the favourite. Yeah. She's certainly the favourite with the members yeah. by yeah. by some margin. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. We, what we'll do, we will film a little codicil to this show <laughs> and, and sort of say what we just said was completely, we were just saying it actually, we, you know, mm. we were right all along or whatever. Um, I would have mm. to say I've been more impressed by, by Jenrick, um, mm. you know, come round to him a bit more and she seems, seems to me to, even on this, have taken a rather high-handed approach, uh, even on the Southport thing, it's it was sort of like I think you should know the facts and it was like this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, we'll see. Um, coming back down to our business, if you like, well, and that is that uh, GB News, mm. we're all very familiar with in different ways, has indeed just been fined by Ofcom after what seems to have been quite a lengthy thing mm. that's been going on. Mm. It, this is to do with um, a show they did with Rishi Sunak, who was, well, still Prime Minister yeah. but during the election, and they were got for being impartial, isn't mm. that right? Yeah. Well, it was long before the election, actually. It was in February that this, that this um, event took place. It was called the People's Platform, I think, and it was a, a platform provided to the Prime Minister to take questions from the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, Ofcom were, received a number of complaints about this on the grounds that he wasn't, severe, he wasn't properly confronted and challenged on his points of view. Questions were asked without any follow-up questions and so forth. 
Um, but, you know, on the other side, people have said, well, look, Sir Keir Starmer had on LBC a show called Call Keir, mm. and no one seems to have complained mm. about him receiving those sorts of questions as leader of the opposition. And GB News in his defence quite rightly said that they offered the same thing to Keir Starmer to have his own time mm. with members of the public, and he didn't take them up on that offer. Um, Ofcom also said that um, this was a pre-election event and therefore it shouldn't have taken place, and that was also one of the reasons why they came down so harsh. I'm sorry, but we don't have the fixed term Parliament mm. Act. Mm. Nobody knew when there was going to be an election. Mm. Mm. The election could have been, you know, this month, mm. <laughs> you know, we're talking about. So how on earth could GB mm. News have known when an election would have taken place? And anyway, it was in February rather than July when the election did take place. So GB News is appealing this. And so whilst Ofcom mm. has imposed this fine, they, they, the fine won't be have to be paid until a decision is made on the appeal that they're making against this, because it is a direct challenge to, to free speech in this country. You wouldn't find this happening in America, for mm. example, by, by any stretch. I'm, I, you know, I prefer our system of, of media compared to America, which I think is too polarizing. I think we, we are, you know, for all its ills, I think we do have a healthier system. But if this, you know, we, we know full well that there's a bias against places like Ofcom, mm. because GB News, against places like GB News, because it's no more biased than Channel 4, than at LBC. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's actually less biased because we know that more GB News voters voted for the Labour Party than voted for the Conservative Party, <laughs> which you couldn't <laughs> say uh, the opposite applies to Channel 4 viewers and so forth. And so, it, once again, it just seems as if uh, the, the Ofcom's big stick is used against one, yeah. na one, one station. After all, you know, Talk TV decided to leave the, the realm of Ofcom and go onto the, onto mm -hmm. the internet for us, so it wouldn't be regulated. GB News has willingly chosen to be regulated, but if these sorts of attacks carry on, it might well do the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. the way these things are presented, you'd think that GB News is the only channel that, that mm. is ever on the receiving end of these things. What about BBC bias, BBC anti-Semitism? You know, they've been hauled up, you know, before these things. So I think it was 500 and odd people, mm. I think, uh, complained about this. Now, we know that there's a, a body of people that will just complain every time GB, you know, for every day mm -hmm. uh, because that's what they do mm. gb news quite rightly said that out of i think out of the i think it was 15 questions that were, were put to rishi sunak 14 of them were hostile mm -hmm. so um i think their defense is 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 fairly robust and and and, and i think they're absolutely right here I mean, we you know we all spend time on gb news and i'd say it's a it's a it's it's a fit it's not it's not perfect but but no channel is perfect but it's a it's it, it's rigorous it's robust and and you know it's a it's a good news channel but the people if it's why people at ofcom are the same as the people at the electoral commission yeah. and they're the yeah. same as the people at any quango yeah, system. yeah. I, I think from the get-go i mean people didn't want gb news to be successful did they the mainstream media mm -hmm. didn't want a right a right-leaning channel to um, have any kind of success and as as I think most people were surprised at how successful it did become mm. particularly during the pandemic um, and I think there was something about the fact that they had Rishi Sunak on to me was a testament of how successful and how accepted mm. they had become as a channel that, that, that the Prime Minister would see them as um, you know a channel to go on and f to spend an hour on that it was it had become quite est established mm. and I think that was why I, I suspect why they, they have really gone for this because it was almost as though so, um, you know, Rishi Sunak or the Conservative government were kind of traitors in, in some sense to the liberal media. I think mm. there was something about that in it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, a hundred thousand pounds that they're going to have to pay. Of course, they're appealing it. Um, but I remember, you know, people all along the way have been challenging GB News. You know, I, I remember when there was that incident of Lawrence Fox where mm. he said something rather laddish. He said he didn't want to, he, he didn't find a particular woman attractive and he wouldn't sleep with her. And the extreme, you know, um, mm. catastrophizing that happened around that. There was actually a, a Newsnight program where all the presenters were just unanimous in their kind of, hatred of GB News. I think Adam Bolton went as so far as to say the whole thing should be shut down because of what Lawrence Fox had said. Mm. Um, and that the, ironically uh, um, breached impartiality rules because they didn't have anybody showing the other side of Did the argument. Yes, on, yeah. on Newsnight, mm. yes. But um, you know, obviously Newsnight weren't fined as I understand it. So um, yeah, I mean, people have been gunning from GB News from the get-go. Um, and it's, it's, it's very sad that they you know, have to go through all of these lawsuits. Um, but good on them for fighting against it, I yeah. think. When you think, actually, that on, is it, uh, was it on Good Morning Britain, 
mm. Ed Balls yes. ended up interviewing his, his wife, wife, the Home yeah. Secretary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, one, one, one of the reasons they hate GB News is because they hate Tories and they hate Tory politicians. There are so many Tory politicians and ex-Tory politicians that are linked to GB News. It's, mm. it's, it's pure politics. It's, it's brute politics. We, we know what it is and they know what it is. It's, it's as simple as that. It was, uh, this, I remember when it was Adam Bolton, mm. Mm. Who yeah. used to be on Sky, who to me sort of summed up in one character this overfed, complacent sort of liberal attitude yeah. mm. dripping down on people, you yeah. know. And he uh, said, oh, yes, we can't upset the delicate ecosystem of the British media. Yeah. That was what it was, wasn't it? You know, it's amazing. Mm. But, um, I mean, I do find the American, you say it's polarizing, but I do find it more invigorating. Yes, but I think it's certainly exciting. entertaining. Yeah. yeah, but it's certainly been the main, what, what, along with social media, the main reason for the polarization of American society and the yeah. divisions there. I think are unhealthy, and I so I, yes. so the fact that there is some semblance of balance, and you know, say what you want about BBC and GB News Channel, they are forced to actually have opposing voices on there, mm -hmm. and then not necessarily the strongest conservative voices that are present on Newsnight. You will get a wet discussing things like immigration, but at least they have someone rather than nobody, and so those things I think are important. Speaking of TV, actually, it's quite, actually, it's quite, you know, again, being a little indulgent here, but speaking of TV, of course, um, it's been on social media that uh, YouTube, and where we are on this, um, has been sort of like being very fishy uh, when it comes to, you know, certain platforms and sort of maybe suppressing views and things like this. And uh, we've all been through this before, mostly, mostly with COVID, uh, but this relates particularly to a big uh, electoral event happening next week. <laughs> I won't say the word because the algorithm might pick it up. But um, I just want to say, what do you think uh, between the three of us? What do you think? Who's going to get it? Just initials. I think it'll go to the big T. The big T? <laughs> yes, he's, he's, he's out in front. She's struggling. Uh, she's saying stupid things. The ex-president is saying stupid things, offering gifts to, uh, to Mr. T. Thanks so much for that. Uh, we're just going to carry on a little bit longer for our members, some exclusive material for them. Um, but thanks very, very much for watching. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Philip. Um, we shall see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.